This video is brought to you by Incogni. Since February 2022, Northern Ireland has been without a functioning devolved government, after the largest unionist party, the DUP, withdrew from power sharing in protest at Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. However, two years, two prime ministers and a Windsor framework later, it looks like a new deal might have finally been agreed, and Northern Ireland's government could soon be back up and running. So in this video, we're going to have a look at Northern Ireland's Brexit-induced political crisis, this week's deal, and what happens next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So to understand this story, we need to go all the way back to Brexit. Essentially, because Brexiteers wanted regulatory divergence from the EU, which was touted as one of the main Brexit benefits, there was always going to have to be a border somewhere between the UK and the Republic of Ireland, which is an EU member state. Broadly speaking, there were two places it could go, along the Northern Ireland-Republic of Ireland border, or between the island of Ireland and Great Britain. In other words, you could either have an Irish land border or an Irish sea border. Because an Irish land border would be at least in tension with the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, a major development in the Northern Ireland peace process that ended most of the violence of the Troubles, successive British governments essentially decided to go for the Irish sea border. This didn't go down well with Unionists in Northern Ireland, both because they considered a border within the UK, i.e. between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, to be a threat to the Union, and because successive Prime Ministers, including Boris Johnson and Theresa May, had promised them it wouldn't happen. However, it's worth saying here that most Unionists, including the largest Unionist party in the Northern Irish Assembly, the Democratic Unionist Party, actually supported Brexit in 2016, presumably because they thought that isolating the UK from the EU would ultimately strengthen the Union. In February 2022, the DUP resigned from the Northern Irish Assembly in protest at Boris Johnson's Brexit deal, specifically the Northern Ireland Protocol, which had introduced some checks for goods being sent from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Under the Good Friday Agreement, Northern Ireland's devolved assembly, known as Stormont, operates on a cross-community power-sharing system which requires support from both Unionists and Irish nationalists to function. This means that when the DUP withdrew, the whole system collapsed, and Northern Ireland's government essentially stopped functioning. By the way, this isn't uncommon in Northern Irish politics. In fact, since they were first established a year and a half after the Good Friday Agreement, Northern Ireland's devolved institutions have been non-functioning for over 40% of that time. A few months later, in May 2022, a Northern Ireland Assembly election was held and saw Sinn Féin emerge as the largest party, the first time in the nation's history that an Irish nationalist party had done so. Nevertheless, the DUP opted to continue its protest against the Northern Ireland Protocol and post-Brexit trading arrangements by boycotting the election of an Assembly Speaker. In February 2023, Rishi Sunak announced his new Windsor framework, which essentially reduced the frequency and intensity of Great Britain Northern Ireland checks described by the original Northern Ireland Protocol, by creating a check-free green lane for goods going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland and remaining there. The Windsor Framework also introduced something called the Stormont Break, which allowed the Northern Ireland Assembly to object to changes to EU rules that apply in Northern Ireland. There was some hope that this would be palatable enough to the DUP to convince them to return to Stormont, but the DUP said it was still unacceptable because it didn't meet their seven tests, although it's worth saying that the tests three and five include no border in the Irish Sea and no checks on goods going between Northern Ireland and Great Britain, which is a pretty high bar. Anyway, for the past few months, the DUP, the UK government and the EU have been trying to negotiate a deal that would get power sharing in Northern Ireland back up and running. On Monday night, after months of negotiations, DUP leader Sir Geoffrey Donaldson organised a meeting to tell his party that a deal had been agreed. Unfortunately for Donaldson, the meeting, which was supposed to be secret, was leaked to prominent loyalist activist Jamie Bryson, who basically thinks that any checks at all are too much, and has accused Donaldson of being a collaborator for agreeing to the deal. Bryson then live-tweeted the meeting, including the bits when Donaldson realised it was being live-tweeted, and tried unsuccessfully to figure out who was leaking it. So, what's in the new deal? 
Well, at the time of writing, we don't have all the details, because all the relevant legal documents haven't been published yet. But reports suggest there are basically three things happening. First, there's essentially a cosmetic change in that the Green Lane is being renamed the UK Internal Markets Lane. Second, it looks like imports moving into Northern Ireland originating in third countries, which the UK has trade deals with, will be subject to fewer customs-related frictions. This has apparently been signed off by the EU, because it was agreed to by the EU-UK Joint Committee, which essentially decides which goods are at risk of going into the single market via Northern Ireland. Now, it's worth saying that, while this in some senses brings Northern Ireland closer to the rest of the UK, the practical impact of this is going to be more competition for Northern Irish farmers from countries with free trade agreements, like Australia, which is probably not good news for business. Third, Geoffrey Donaldson has claimed that there will be an end to dynamic alignment. For context, at the moment, unless Northern Ireland uses the aforementioned Stormont break, then future changes in EU law have to be observed in Northern Ireland. This has always been an affront to unionists, because it creates regulatory divergence between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but is required to avoid an Irish land border. So, does this mean that Northern Ireland's political crisis is over? Well, no, not yet. While this calls for cautious optimism, we'll have to wait to see the details of the New Deal, and the fundamental Brexit dilemma still holds. In other words, it's hard to imagine any potential deal that reduces checks to the extent that the DUP hardliners are placated. And remember, one of their seven tests is literally no checks in the Irish Sea, while simultaneously maintaining enough checks so that the EU are happy that the integrity of the single market is being protected. Nonetheless, this is still a step in the right direction, and it would obviously be great news if Northern Ireland finally got a functioning government. Now, while you've been learning about Northern Ireland in this video, you might not realise that shady forces are working in the background to collect personal data from various sites and bundle it together ready to sell to a third party. Now, these data brokers can sell this bundle of information about you to anyone from a company to an online criminal. Now, while you might assume that you're safe online, perhaps you change your password regularly, or perhaps you're a hawk and always uncheck that little box that signs you up to annoying newsletters. Unfortunately, this doesn't completely save you. Companies that hold your data can still fall victim to a data breach, meaning that these data brokers can still compile information about you to sell on to others. Now, this is where our sponsor Incogni comes in. They reach out to these data brokers on your behalf, request that your data is removed, and deal with any problems that might arrive. In fact, they're tenacious, and will put in multiple data removal requests even after your data's been removed to make sure that it doesn't go back on the market. So, create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for Incogni for sponsoring this video.